Hey everybody, welcome to Surface Level, curious conversations about the Black and queer experience. I'm one of your hosts, Iman, and today, Jordan, Tony, and I are discussing queer male sexuality in music. What inspired you to go for more overtly sensual music? I feel like my earlier music was more abstract, and so I just wanted it to sort of like trickle on down and get like lower in the body. I was gonna ask Serpent if you've ever felt boxed in. I think when people try something different, there's always gonna be resistant. Queer men love their female pop stars, but I think that sometimes that femininity in queer male artists is often viewed as they're doing too much. You can talk about sex um, and be overt and be very in your face, and you can be a lot more subtle and poetic with it. This is Bedroom Playlist. Ooh. Yeah, you know, bedroom for, for the, playlist. For bedroom time. playlist. Well, well, Jordan don't have one. She said she don't need no music. She don't need music. <laughs> She's having <laughs> her bedroom time. We don't need music because sometimes it takes too much to curate it. Mm -mm. But maybe if you have a this playlist, then you need to have a bedroom playlist. Yeah. You're right. So we're gonna build one for one you by the end of the episode. The girls, okay. have, these, the girls <laughs> have their sex playlists. I love a, a, a music going on. <laughs> so when I'm, I was gonna say bumping and grinding. You but need I a, hate to some, use. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, we are going to have an artist on today that you can add to your playlist, though. Okay. So, Serpent with Feet is a Brooklyn-based musician who hails from Baltimore, Maryland. His influences combine both classical and gospel music with collaborators like Brockhampton, Ty Dolla Sign, Ellie Goulding, Twigs, and Sampha. He's what I'd like to describe an artist artist. His debut studio album, Soil, was released in 2018 followed by Deacon in 2021, and his third newly released album, Grip, released just this year. Pace Magazine described Grip as a vulnerable collection of songs made for the heat of the moment, intimacy, and everything that comes before, during, and after. So with that, you'll understand why he's the perfect addition to our season of sex and sexuality themed throb. So it is our pleasure to welcome who I'll call the purveyor of Butch Queen music, Serpent with Feet, to our surface level family. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Hello. 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 Wow, what an Butch intro. <laughs> yes. Well, before before we jump in, because I know Demond's getting ready to take to take us on to the next level, <laughs> I have a question that came from someone that knew we were going to be sitting down with you, and they wanted to know where did Serpent with Feet come from? Oh, that's today. What I'll say is that I really appreciate snakes. I think they have a lot to offer us. Um, I really love the king cobra. They can grow up to like eighteen feet long, and um, when they need to, they can lift one third of their body off the ground, mm. so they can look a six foot person in the eye. Um, but they, but they're really, from my understanding, really um, like introverted creatures, mm -hmm. like you know. But yeah, don't test them because they can lift that body up. Don't test <laughs> Listen, he said, it, it, does that mean a snake with feet or is he carrying a snake or both? I said, well. <laughs> they, they, they had that Stay curious. Stay curious. Stay curious. <laughs> sometimes you're going to pop out I'm and show niggas. <laughs> also, I'm LA based now, but I did used to live in Brooklyn. Oh, nice. Yeah. But just, yeah. Oh, we've, we've, moved, we've moved on west. But, but I, still, I still love New York, so. I'm just like, you hold it in your heart. It's still. A, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Nice. So today, we always start our episodes with a bit of a game. Mm -hmm. um, so as a little tribute to her album, this okay. game is called Get a Grip. Oh. <laughs> and we'll have some little playful things oh. with your album, things you've had going on, and we'll ask some fun questions. They're open-ended, so get your thinking caps on. Okay. All right. Um, so Serpent's Grip Tour has hit these cities, Washington, D.C., Philly, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and L.A. Which city have you found the men with that have the grip on you? Tony. Which city do I find the men have a grip on me? Yeah. You like a Philly boy, D.C., New York, oh, Chicago, uh, San Fran, or L.A.? I was going to say a city that's not even on that list. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say New Houston, Orleans. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I feel you, name that list again. Watch D.C., Philly, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and L.A. Chicago has some nice men. D.C., they they done up their, the ante in D.C. Because yes. the <laughs> bodies, every time I go, I'm like, okay, so D.C. is – Competing with LA in terms of they also just sitting around going to work and then going to the they gym. They are taking those khakis off and lifting weights. <laughs> yeah, taking every the khakis day. off is wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sure. Um, I have to agree. I mean, for me, it's New York or DC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Serpent. New York or DC. I'm from Baltimore originally, so I just feel like DC men. There's like some connective tissue there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I have yeah, I'm gonna go with New York. And My God, Jesus. today, as they say, <laughs> y'all all from that er- that area. <laughs> Listen, I love it. I love it. <laughs> all right. Um, so the grip album art shows Serpent laying on actor David Stefan. They laid up together. Here's a here's a picture. We'll mm-hmm. put it up for the girls as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what you look like. Um, <laughs> have you ever needed to get a grip because you were too pressed and posted on the internet with a man you barely knew? Oh my goodness. This my man, like, y'all. Y'all want to see? Oh. oh, no, I'm saying these are sort of warm up questions. I'm like, hold on, what are we yeah. getting to? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Have I posted someone that I was jumping to guy? I mean, sometimes when you take a photo with someone that's cute, you just want to post it, but not necessarily saying my man. It's just like, look at the me. The girls love to be like, and this man. <laughs> you be like, can you <laughs> have a different <laughs> look, at, look at me with him. <laughs> with this man. Not, not mine, to, but look. He's not mine, but he could be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't jump the gun on okay. social media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I take I Jordan, take get a grip. I take it very <laughs> slow. Yeah, I think I'm private in that way. So, yeah, yeah, my, my keep, husband's not I, on my social media, so. What'd you say? My husband's not on my social media, okay. so. <laughs> Mind your business. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So next, the song "Deep In" opens mm-hmm. with the lyric, "It's the sixth night of a one night stand." Oh, have you ever had a hookup? that had a grip on you and just spilled over and over into a much longer affair. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Those are fun. More times than I can count. Mm-hmm. I like a, I like You it. fall I in mean, love at every one. A whirlwind love affair. <laughs> <laughs> that just means it's good. And if it, if, if it feels good, let it feel good. Mm. Let it keep yeah. feeling good. Mm. Keep on using you to make you up. <laughs> use me, Lord. <laughs> Serpent. Yeah, I think I've definitely had some, um, some surprises. You know, like when they come and they might bring snacks, and you're like, "Oh, this is like, oh, oh this is we're making it nice." Like, mm-hmm. are we getting breakfast after? Like, are we going out to get breakfast? Like, mm-hmm. it's a it's a nice curveball. We always love a pleasant <laughs> surprise. I also like for my sex to be less transactional. Yeah, yeah. At this yeah, point we, in my life, we want the we want the sweetness. We want an <laughs> experience. We're too old for the. That's nice. <laughs> Make it nice. Make it nice for me, for me Ma. Um, and then last question. One of his things is titled Safe Word. So what safe word would you use if someone plays too much grip around your neck? Plays too much grip around You're in your bed. neck. There's, oh, a, there's a light neck. press on the neck. It's gone too far. You all have a safe word. What would your safe word be? Less. <laughs> um, I picked mercy. Oh, mercy. Oh. I looked up a list earlier and I was like, oh, that's a good word. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> Tony said, ah! "Get the fuck off of me! <laughs> Quit it!" <laughs> safe words are so interesting to me because I'm just like, "What am I supposed to say?" Banana, something random. Well, you 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 decide on a word together. That's how safe words work. Yeah, I know. it's like okay, I don't. Yeah, stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's safe to me. She said, <laughs> Sorry. It would probably be fruit for me too. It'd probably be like tangerine. You know. See, that just, sounded better than what you just said, but now. Well, banana's fitting. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> Eggplant. <laughs> Eggplant. Okay. And Serpent, the one question we ask all of our guests, mm-hmm. just for you, what are you curious about? Anything. <sighs> big, small, light, I would, heavy. I would say everything. I'm curious about my environment, the world around me, the people I meet. I think I always have a lot of questions about everything. Okay. I spent a lot of time on Google. So. What's the last thing you Googled? Ooh, um, today I was doing some Googling, it's random, about this um, composable Marion Cook. So mm-hmm. I just had, I studied a bit about him in college and I was like, oh, I just want to, I'm just curious about his life again. So, yeah. Well, I'm curious cool. girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay curious. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so moving into our conversation, um, as I alluded to earlier, our entire season, it's called Throb. It's about sex and sexuality. So mm-hmm. we've explored a whole gambit of topics. And mm-hmm. I think today we're going to focus a bit on music, art, and how sexuality can show up. And it's discussed typically around mm-hmm. um, queer men, particularly black queer men. So we'll start here. Uh, Pitchfork, when reviewing your album, said that his songwriting is punchier and more direct in, its pure, in this purest mode. There are more come ons and solicitations than in, in, innuendo and symbolism, a shift that fits the intimate theme. So we want to start here. What it's inspired you to go for more kind of an overtly sensual music on the new album, Grip? Yeah, I, um, I feel like my earlier music was 
maybe some would say was more <clears throat> more abstract, more lofty, and more cerebral. And so I just wanted it to sort of like trickle on down and get like lower in the body. Like we started <laughs> here with matters of the mind and the heart and the spirit, which is great. And I think that will always be there. But then I'm like, it's time to get like, Physical. <laughs> yeah, it's time to get physical. Like, yeah, you know, it's, time, it's time to it's time to go down now. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting too. But I think that as you anyone evolves in their art forms, they become more comfortable with certain things. I was looking at our first season of this show. Mm -hmm. There's not a single overtly sexual topic in the whole first season. Mm. And now we're at a place where we're doing an entire season dedicated to that space. So I mm -hmm. think that as you in whatever art form, I think that there are certain things where like you think about. What are people gonna think? Or like, what are the societal impacts? And then yeah. like, as you become more comfortable in who you are, you explore more of who mm -hmm. you are. Was that indicative of your sexual journey, expression of yourself? Were you at one time less, uh, I guess, risque, willing to overtly say things and cover topics in that way? And maybe now through your journey and through mm -hmm. your experiences, feel like you're more comfortable doing that? Hmm. Well, I, I would say, well, the album isn't autobiographical, but obviously it's informed by my experience, other people's experiences, things I've witnessed on TV or film. It's sort of like a, a, a mosaic in that way. Um, but I think I've always been interested in the flesh and in mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I, I just have a lot to say and there's no way to do it all at once. Um, mm. So yeah, I think the earlier music, I definitely do talk about the body and desire and um, yearning <laughs> and all that. But um, I think I needed to wax poetic on that. And now I was like, okay, I think I've done all the done all the sort of like meandering, mm -hmm. you know, songwriting. Now it's just it's fun. It's fun to try something that's much more exact and measured. Um, I think that that's its own challenge. Um, so I guess that was the the pursuit this time around. Yeah. Um, so moving, I think, to a broader community, we mm -hmm. often think of black queer men and we've seen within our friend group and just generally people we know how people will respond differently to music about queer romance mm -hmm. versus music that may be a bit more overtly sexual in its intim intimacy. Why do we think that is? Jordan, do you have a? Um, I don't I don't know if I think that it depends. I think that there isn't just like a it's not black and white where it's just like if you're overtly sexual, you respond one way. And if you are talking about romance without the sex, then it's another way. I think it really comes down to, for me at least, when I'm listening to music, is like what is the actual like composition of the music and the way that the conversation of sex is being approached? How is that being taken into consideration? Because I think that, you know, you can talk about sex um, and – be overt and be very in your face and you can be a lot more subtle and poetic with it and so i think that an example that i'll use is you know two songs that i really really enjoy one of them being wop by cardi b mm. and one of them being how does it feel by d'angelo mm. both talking about sex but i think the way in which the music is produced and developed and created um it elicits a different r emotional response mm -hmm. and so for me it's, it's i think it's less about the subject matter mm -hmm. um that elicits the response for me and more about the way in which the subject matter is approached mm -hmm. and how the music sort of serves as a canvas to tell the story mm -hmm. so did that answer the question <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm like I'm intrigued because I, I think it's more a question about I think as queer people were often taught like, oh, we or people generally in this like heteronormative world where we're searching for love, we're searching mm -hmm. for longing, we're searching for partnership. And I think that generally people respond favorably and positively to people singing love songs. Yeah. Um, I think that we also live in a world and particularly in the U.S. where there's a lot of shame around sexuality. And then when you compound that with queer sexuality, I would say there's more shame. So like if I'm singing a song about queer sex, that's sometimes maybe a, a thing that people feel uncomfortable about or people feel like they wouldn't want that song played around their mother 
versus yeah. they if you sing a song about being in love, sure play the song around my mama. Um and and I think that that is something that particularly all people, but then more specifically queer people kind of wrangle with when consuming art. Mm-hmm. Got you. Okay. Yeah, I mean I see I see that nuance, but I still think that there's like a difference cuz I I do I I do get that mm-hmm. parent like you know barometer of like do I want my mom to listen to this? I think there's a difference <laughs> between playing ASAP Ferg, like suck a nigga dick or something, <laughs> or playing Victoria Monet, um, friend you can keep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they like both talk about sex, but you know, my my mom is old school. And so when 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 music was about sex back then, it was like, you know, it was innuendos, it was, Girl. you know, double entendres. It was ways to talk about sex without making it um I guess like as explicit and as overt. Have you listened to a Marvin Gaye song? Yeah. No fucking and then you windows in that song. I mean, you said there were not. No, I'm saying it's, it's. I think that there are actually a lot more overt sexual songs, older songs, and our parents just be lying. Like when you like, if you really get into some of the lyrics of older music, you be like, "Yo, niggas were nasty." Yeah, I think it's because you have to actually like listen to the lyrics and what's going on. Like just because they so, playing and it's a couple horns in the background, don't mean they're not saying the same thing <laughs> Cardi B is saying. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I mean, when it comes to like romance versus like intimacy and, and something that's more explicitly sexual, I I don't know if I've observed a difference in reaction from Black queer folks mm-hmm. to the music. Like I personally. I enjoy when it's more explicit. When I am like, I love when it, because when you have like the Cardi B's and you have um, heterosexual rappers and singers that they do that all the time. And we don't get to have that experience all the time. So when it happens, for me, I get excited. <laughs> and it becomes like, you know, something that I want to hear often and, and dance with to mm-hmm. and, and experience and share with my friends. And I want to go to the club and hear those songs mm-hmm. because it's something that we don't typically get all the time. And what, when it comes to like romance versus that intimacy, I enjoy both. And they neither, I don't think I have such a des- desperate or like the, disparate. My, disparate response or reaction to the two, I just really get happy mm-hmm. that it, it exists and it's there for me to listen to. And um, like in even preparation for this episode and when we've done other, other episodes around uh, queer, black queer music, discovering new artists, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's something that you have to do some research <clears throat> and homework because mm-hmm. I was on Google looking up shit and it's not always so in your face and they highlight the mainstream artists a lot Mm -hmm. and so i wanted to uncover not only the ones that are mainstream or becoming more mainstream but also those that you know are lesser known that are still killing it and and providing a lot of great music content out there for us to listen to so yeah the girls the queer men love their female pop stars Mm -hmm. everybody that you on a team you in one of these internet gangs um (laughs) You got your pink wigs. Um, but I think that sometimes that femininity in queer male artists is often viewed as they're doing too much or the mm-hmm. response isn't as um, embracing as you see Beyonce in a glittered leotard versus if you see a male artist in one. Like, why do we feel that there is kind of that difference in accepting our own individuals who mm-hmm. may ex- kind of show give that pop star energy versus being like, okay, girl, like, I see it for the women. I don't. I think there's a to to one extent there's the idolization like over your pop artists like mm-hmm. the Beyonces like um, your Nicki Minaj's your Megan Thee Stallions. I think as a gay black man, I like I, it's almost like um, having a, a second personality and and living through that those artists. Mm-hmm. You know, I stand the Beyonce's. I love to like do the dances and pretend like I have a wig on. And <laughs> you know, while it may be a little bit jarring to to necessarily see that happen with <clears throat> black queer artists, I mean, gay artists, yeah, black queer artists, because you're not something that you don't see, and people kind of, they want to, I think, nitpick and attack something that they don't always see. 
like I, Little Nas X, when he first came out, right, he mm-hmm. was uh, mm-hmm. more, I guess, tame in his expression. And then he's become more of like expressive with how he's showing himself to the world. And people didn't know how to receive that or take that. So I don't know why there's such a, a difference. I can only say like idolization and, and, and women and those pop stars. Serpent? Well, I guess I think when, I have a few different ideas, but I think when people try something different, there's always gonna be resistance, even outside of, you know, more feminine or more masculine expression. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think if, you know, we see with black women all the time, they change their hair and it's a big, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of commentary around that. So I think with men, <clears throat> we don't, we don't give, cis men space in general to do anything if you don't want to wear navy blue and khakis <laughs> mm-hmm. good luck so um well i think now like you know there's a bit more like sartorial space but um yeah i, I just think we, we there's like a very rigid idea of what a man is um and i think that bleeds obviously like, into the music and into that whole thing but which is also kind of sad. Like, if you yeah. think about, like, art should be this, like, really freeing space and, like, a space for you to, um, I don't know, explore the truest parts of yourself. I feel like we've been so conditioned to believe that, like, as men, you have to present this type of way in all areas of life. Work, yeah. as an artist, as a person, yeah. just walking down the street. And then, I don't know, it always comes back to respectability for me. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. there are so few... And then if we're, if we're just talking about like main stages, I, like I'm the big component, like I think to Tony's point too, around s- supporting independent and small artists and so on. But if we talk about pop fame mm-hmm. and stardom, there have been so few people in that space, it becomes, I don't know, almost this reflection of people's own insecurities. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. that person succeeds, is that what they're going to think every gay man is? Mm-hmm. And like, well, why do you give a fuck of what they think about what any gay man is yeah. in the first fucking place? Yeah. And like that's the thing that always kind of stresses me out about it. Like, oh, they're doing too much, and therefore, they're not gonna see me as the person that works my corporate America job and does this. Mm-hmm. Just like, well, no, they're just trying to be a reflection of their truest form mm-hmm. of self. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that, I don't know, like, and then it's just like, but then it's just like, um, we're always in the same kid though that was like tied the sheet around their head, pretending they got mm-hmm. a wig on. And it's just like, <laughs> we can see yourselves in this like almost like avatar version of yourself because if you think about the female presence, but then when it's like an actual variation of what you could be, then it becomes kind of scary. Yeah. I don't know, that's, what do you think? I mean, I, I think that when we talk about like, let's just call it stan culture. Mm-hmm. I think that when we talk about stan culture, I agree. Um, Serpent, you said something about um, this like ideal uh, version of either male or female. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, Damon, you mentioned something about people seeing themselves in the person. And Tony, you mentioned idolizing. I think that's all at play. Mm-hmm. I think when you think about stan culture and people who um, take on um, their like or the support towards uh, musicians because they feel like it's a reflection of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they're actively making the decision to not support people who don't align with the ideal. Mm-hmm. And I think because a big component of Stan culture is this idea of like competition, mm-hmm. where it's like, well, my fave is, you know, charting this, and my fave is doing this. It's all really, really concerned with commercial success. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, when a male artist deviates outside of what the mass population thinks to be the ideal, I think, you know, people who in, who participate in stand culture is just like, oh, well, I can't that can't be my fave right. because like they're not going to be able to reach the lens of maybe this one who's mm. being in the box a little bit. And so mm. I'm going to support this person so that I can be a part of this community of stands. And so I feel like that has something to do with it. And it's not just men either. Um, it, it works with women too. And I think that that's why a lot of um, the female artists that have grown really massive loyal followings, they also too sort of have 
somewhat of a homogenous presentation mm. to the world where it's, you know, a certain type of body type, it's a certain type of aesthetic and style. And so I think that that whole concept of Stan culture and Stan wars is all sort of like fueled by this idea of like, who's going to be the number one in the industry or in the genre or in the, the category of artists that are similar. And I think it has a lot less to do with like the actual art itself. It's given, well, it's given sports. It is. <laughs> it yeah. is given That's sports. That's your favorite team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what it's given. It's like, a, who, what camp are you in? It's like, yeah. 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 yeah I was going to ask Serpent if you've ever felt boxed in or people T- saying that you're doing too much with how you've expressed yourself because you don't always show up the same way mm-hmm. in every room that you step in or every stage that you take yeah. and so have you have you gotten that criticism maybe but i think i think when you hear so much growing up all of it's just like it's just white noise mm-hmm. if there is any noise mm-hmm. it's i don't really know if i feel it um mm-hmm. i think with with my intimate social circle and people that I really care about, that's not that's not the conversation. Mm-hmm. And so I think with everything else, I mean, yeah, like I know the world is, they have their views, I guess, but like I, I just, um, I don't know if I've removed myself from it. Mm-hmm. But again, like I've, I've, I've been called so many things since I was a kid at some point. Like when am I gonna live my life? Because I can't live your life. Yeah. Um, and even if I lived your life, you would have issues with that too. You know. Um, so yeah, I think it just doesn't. It doesn't. Get so you current. don't have that like um, that lens, I guess, or that pressure that you put on yourself from what society deems you should show up as, or what's appropriate, or what's doing too much. Because I know that a lot of it's hard being an artist, and mm-hmm. there's that that voice in the back of your head is like, are they going to accept me? Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you have managed to be in a place where you've you've, you've blocked that white noise out and yeah. you are only paying attention to your true artistry and yourself and then also your immediate circle um, and keeping that in mind, yeah. which is probably good advice for those who struggle. Yeah, because I, I don't think playing it safe works for anybody. Mm-hmm. I don't think it works for straight men either. Um, and maybe that's a hot take and maybe I'm like, that's a blanket statement, but um, I think cis, straight men, um, anyone really who chooses uh, to ignore their imagination and intuition, I mm-hmm. think they struggle too. I think whether it may not be a sartorial thing, it may be coming up with new songs. Like I think the way you dress, the way you write, what you eat, I think they're all strung together. And I think if you struggle in one space, another space is gonna be affected by it. So I think, you know, you see artists that are like, I'm not inspired. It's like, well, there's inspiration everywhere, but maybe, yeah. maybe it is. You got to, I keep coming back to the khakis because you mentioned it. <laughs> 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 but like, maybe you have to take off the khakis and like, right. put on a skirt. I don't know. Like, maybe you just yeah. got to switch it up, you know, like, no, I, um, but I, I think that's sort of like, because it'll dictate how you move and maybe you'll be inspired by the wind on your legs. Like, I don't know. But I think if, I don't think playing it safe works for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the things that we've had a lot of conversations on this show and the idea comes up that like, oh, someone feels uncomfortable in something. And I've always said like the the least helpful thing anyone can ever be is comfortable mm-hmm. um, because that's where you lack growth. That's mm-hmm. where you lack new experiences. That's where you you just aren't you just aren't growing and like ex- finding new things because mm-hmm. there's so much life and each day it's different. Mm-hmm. Each day you should be coming progressively different, not yeah. better or worse, mm-hmm. just different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that can be beautiful for artists. We're just mm-hmm. people living and breathing, and maybe you don't make art, but it's just like yeah. a part of like fa- like nurturing the soul in that way. I yeah. think. So. Yeah. I have a question about um, your creative process. Oh, okay. So um, I'm just curious. Uh, you know, the process of making music, and when you're when you are going through that, is there a specific person or community of people that you're hoping that the music really speaks to, or is that person yourself? I'm just curious if that plays a role in the development of anything. Yeah, I mean, I'm always hoping that the music and the work, the music and the work reaches the right people. Um, And yeah, I don't know if I have like a really 
profound answer for that, but I'm always hoping that it reaches the right people. Um, obviously, I'm a black, gay, queer man. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, I'm always thinking about um, that. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I'm always hoping that it reaches the right people. And, um, and even if it reaches the wrong people, hope it blesses them on their day too. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well speak, like speaking like more into that then, like if not like a specific group of people, is there like a specific sort of emotion that you want people to feel when they're, mm -hmm. when they're experiencing your music? Well, I think something that, I, that I've been feeling recently and it's been really, really exciting me. And, and I think it, it, I try to listen to music generally that, um, that um, invigorates me. Um, but recently I've been so, so excited by, um, by what Doja Cat is doing and what FK Twigs is doing and what Willow is doing. And there's so many artists, um, like Lucky Day is brilliant. They're like, there's so many artists that are really making great music and I feel full after hearing them. Um, so I guess like my, my sort of personal prayer to self is that I hope, um, that people feel full or, um, feel encouraged to imagine or wonder a bit more. Um, but like any like specific emotion, um, I don't, you know, I guess I like, I try to divorce myself from that. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think the artists that I listen to always leave me feeling full. And then I wanna go and try new stuff in the studio. Or I wanna, um, yeah, so I just hope that I give people, I guess a little bit more space to imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think music does that. Like it's, you mentioned Willow, I'm I'm on a very big Willow. This album hive. is incredible. It's so it's good. so brilliant. But like from twenty seconds into Big Feelings, I was like, "What are you doing here? This is interesting." It's like so good. new age jazz influence, like interesting times, like interesting rhythms and time signatures. It's mm -hmm. it's such such and her fucking voice is cool incredible. music. She's it's it's someone that you can tell is doing the work mm -hmm. of the actual art form. Mm -hmm. And I think that's inspiring yeah. when you can tell someone's doing the work of like writing and of training their voice mm -hmm. and learning of new ways to utilize their voice. Yeah. I'm like, if you haven't been paying attention, this is not, she's not whipping her hair back and forth. This is a, a grown <laughs> adult musician mm -hmm. artist doing mm -hmm. the coolest fucking shit. Yeah. Um, but I think moving into our last question, we always like to pepper our listeners with new black queer artists or people mm -hmm. they should follow or listen to. Um, so any songs or artists you want to highlight mm -hmm. um, that kind of highlight the space of queer male sexuality and you want our listeners to hear like what's, what's on your evening playlist? Yeah. Cool. Well, <laughs> In thinking about this, there's so many folks out there who are making incredible music. And so I started to jog just my personal playlists and also some recent folks that I've come across that I haven't had a chance to like listen to their music yet, but I want to mm -hmm. um, and sit with it or actually be able to really sit with it. But I will say th the first person I'm going to mention is not someone who is in the community. Mm -hmm. However, he he does respect the community. I think he unintentionally. I think I know where you dropped. Uh -huh. <laughs> unintentionally dropped a, a, a gay a community anthem, anthem. Oh, a community Lord. anthem, and it's NLE <laughs> NLE Choppa. I knew it. And he has a song. I think the title is called "Slut Me Out Two," as in Part yeah. Two, and where he's like, "If I were a bad, bad bitch, bitch, I'd want to fuck, fuck me too. too. <laughs> I want to fuck, fuck me too. too. Yeah." I, and I just think it's so catchy, and so I was like, "This is." When I talked about explicit early and stuff like that, I was like, this is what I, what I want to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so fun. Uh, however, going into like some of the more actual black queer artists, there's a list of folks, and then I'll land on the person whose song that I want folks to go and actually like, mm -hmm. take a, a listen to. But I had Kicks the Killer, Duran Bernard, Lil Nas X, Saucy Santana, Frank Ocean, Arlo Parks, Kid Ken, Chica, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Yeah. Uh, Destin Conrad, who mm. I recently got into. Mm. Um, Warren, who I love. Seven Deep, who gives it to you love raw. <laughs> <laughs> and the the person who song I had an exercise at work um, where they asked like, "What's your what's the last song you listened to?" Mm -hmm. If you were to open up your um, 
your the app that you listen to music on. And it was for me a song by Austin Holmes called mm. Wonderland. Okay. And this is an artist. He lives here in New York. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting him and talking to him about that that moment at work, but then also talking to him about like what went into the the song. And he said the song was actually about a breakup. And he talks about having to make his own wonderland in the song after having been his world was his partner's and he didn't know a world without that. And so about creating that own wonderland for himself. And the song is fantastic. Has a great voice. If you are in New York City and happen to catch him at a uh, open mic or, you know, I go to the sugar bar and, and I'm uptown and just listen to him saying he's fantastic. So that's the person who, for me, you know, has recently stood out. What about you, Jordan? Um, so I would say I've been listening a lot to Submissive by um, mm. Dustin Conrad. Nice. One or two. Um, both. both of them. Yeah. Yeah, both. <laughs> he has a part two. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they came out. I think maybe like a few weeks between one another. Okay. Um, but he has this song called "It's Only You." Mm -hmm. The video is really beautiful too. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think another song that I just want to call out is uh, "Relocate" by uh. Duran Bernard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. dick so good, make a bitch relocate. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about like sexually mm -hmm. <laughs> explicit, <laughs> but I mean, I, I do sit, I do tend to like um, gravitate more towards R and B in general. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably say those, and, and Tony covered off on a lot of others I listen to as well. I think specifically "Love Me Nots" by Cake the Killer. Cake the Killer is one of the songs that I really enjoy because it has this house feel to it, and it's upbeat, but also like. Actually, no, it's like more like Deep House. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll say those three. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say Devin Tracy, mm -hmm. Apollo Mighty, obviously Destin Conrad, Little Nas X. Yeah. You had to tell them what to listen to on Grip. Oh, oh yeah, Grip by me. <laughs> <laughs> by me. Um, any song specifically? We mentioned Deep End, Safe Word. The song called Lucky Me. Yeah, I mean, the whole album is, you know, it's love time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, bedroom playlist. You know, <laughs> it is the bedroom playlist. And speaking of, because when I think about all these artists, are there, I'm just curious about yeah. the community amongst you all. Mm -hmm. And when you, how you support each other, when you see each other out in the, the wild, hopefully, in my, I'm hoping that there's love shown yes. and, and all of that good yeah. stuff going on. Um, so I'm curious what your experience. Yeah, I mean, that, I, that's been. what I've experienced. Okay, um, good. Which I think earlier you asked about how how do I deal with sort of the pressures or the outside noise. I forget what language you use, but I think part of the reason maybe why I don't feel the pressure to be a very specific thing is because I have a community where we text each other, we talk to each other, we see each other out at the parties, and we like we love the last album. Mm -hmm. I, like I know. Like when I see Destin, I'm like, I will sing his songs in front of him. Like I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I love his music. Um, Devin Tracy's voice is incredible. You know, like Apollo Mighty's writing is incredible. So I think we all share that with each other. So it doesn't feel. Yeah, it, it just feels really warm and generous. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thankful for that. That's so, amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna add Rum Gold to this list. Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. I'm obsessed obsessed. They have like three albums. They're from DC. Um, song I noted down was Waiting, but every, I also, they'll probably be one of my top artists for this year. Cause I'm very into like Rum Gold Radio. Mm -hmm. Because if you, on Spotify, it's just like the collection of things they put together around. Like if you pick him as the starting point, Chef's Kiss. Yeah, I gotta get into some of the Oh, folks. I love, 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 love. Go, you going to DC? Just put it on. It'll, you'll feel nice and calm. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's <laughs> I, need beautiful, the, I need a calm. Like always thinking like a head. <laughs> it's very nice. So really, really good. He had a colors um, thing that I sent you all. I think. Um, a what thing? Colors. Like you know, oh, colors. Yeah, yeah, concert. yeah. His was really good. He did AM, FM, and I forget the secondary song, but they also have the audio from that on like platforms as well. Okay. Serpent, yeah. thank you so much um, you. for coming on, chatting all things music, sexuality, so on. Um, for any of our listeners that want to find you, follow you, hear about things you have that are upcoming or any mm -hmm. sneak peeks and teases you can give them, uh, now's your time. 
Yes, well, I am Serpent with Feet. You can follow me on social media and I always post what I got going on there. And yeah, yeah, my album is out. It's called Grip. Yeah, check it out. Hope you enjoy it and love it and add it to your bedroom playlist, <laughs> and to your car playlist, and to your everything playlist. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and with that, that is all the time we have this week. If you enjoyed this episode, let's keep the conversation going. Let us know your thoughts and questions at surfacelevelpodcast.com. And remember, stay curious. <laughs>